Hello friends, this module focuses on the concept of frequency both in continuous and discrete time signals. Unlike amplitude, we know the time is directly related to frequency. Thus, we expect that the nature of time affects the nature of frequency accordingly. Initially, we will begin with continuous time sinusoidal signal. A indicates the amplitude of the signal. The amount of time required to complete one full cycle of the wave is called as the fundamental period, the inverse of which is the frequency of the signal. This simple harmonic oscillation is mathematically expressed in terms of amplitude and frequency of the signal. This frequency is called as the analog frequency defined as the number of cycles or oscillations in one second. For example, a 100 Hz frequency means that the sinusoid is completing 100 cycles in a second. Moving from continuous time to discrete time signal, the sampling process comes into picture. In practice, the sampling is performed by applying the continuous signal to an analog to digital converter which results in a sequence of numbers called samples that represents the original signal. This sampling is the basic operation involved in the field of digital signal processing. Simply, sampling can be put as gating of the input signal where the gate is triggered on after a specific time interval called the sampling period denoted as TS. To emphasize its discrete nature, the signal is denoted as Xn instead of Xd along with the discrete index N. Hence, the mathematical relation of the discrete signal can be obtained from its continuous counterpart by replacing the time t by the discrete base n along with the sampling time as this discrete sequence is exactly identical to the original sequence at these discrete time instants. The reciprocal of this sampling time is a sampling frequency denoted as fs. Therefore, replacing the sampling interval by sampling frequency term, we reach to an interesting relation, the ratio of analog frequency to digital frequency called as the digital frequency. This is a governing equation that relates continuous frequency to discrete frequency. Digital frequency is defined as the frequency with which the samples of discrete sinusoid occur. It is also either called as a normalized frequency or discrete time frequency. To understand more about discrete frequency, let us compute its dimension. This frequency being the ratio of analog frequency to sampling frequency, the analog frequency has the dimension of cycles per second whereas the sampling frequency has the unit of samples per second which reveals the digital frequency has the dimensions of cycle per sample. This dimension of cycles per second per sample is illustrated using the discrete sinusoidal signal for different values of digital frequency. Therefore, a frequency value of 1 by 16 indicates a discrete periodic signal consisting of 16 samples in one cycle. Similarly, a frequency of 1 by 8 indicates a sequence has 8 samples per cycle, whereas a frequency of 1 by 4 specify only 4 samples per cycle. Summarizing an ideal digitization process performed by analog to digital converter converts the analog frequency into an equivalent digital frequency. The term 2 pi f is called as the digital angular frequency. The mathematical expression for the discrete time sinusoid can then be expressed in terms of an angular frequency. Now let us take a look at an interesting property of discrete time sinusoid. 
we begin with the expression of discrete time sinusoidal signal. Adding a frequency of 2 pi to this signal, the new signal we obtain call it as x dash n. Rearrange the expression and treat omega n plus theta term as a whereas 2 pi n term as b. This expression is identical to cos a plus b form and therefore applying this mathematical identity we observe that the sine multiples of 2 pi is 0 whereas the cosine multiples of 2 pi is 1. With these substitutions the expression reduces back to the original discrete time signal. Thus what we understand is frequency spectrum of discrete signals is periodic with a period of 2 pi. In other words the discrete time sinusoids whose frequencies are separated by an integer multiple of 2 pi are identical. But this periodicity affects the range of digital frequency. To get the range of digital frequency we apply the periodicity property just discuss which convey that the digital signals have a fundamental range between 0 to 2 pi. This results into a digital frequency range restricted between 0 to 1. Also the period of 2 pi can be measured from minus pi to plus pi resulting into a digital frequency range between minus half to plus half. Hence, what we finally interpret is frequency range of discrete signals is finite. Now let's move on to particular cases of sampling. To illustrate this, consider a signal x1 of frequency 100 Hz and x2 with a frequency of 900 Hz. Both these samples both these signals are sampled at the sampling rate of 6500 Hz. Note that this is a case of oversampling as the sampling frequency chosen is beyond twice the highest frequency component. The resulting discrete signals are shown. One with a digital frequency of nearly 65 samples per second and another with 7 samples per cycle. As seen, both these signals are distinctly identified and these samples exactly reconstruct back the original continuous signal. Thus, an accurate digital representation is possible only if the sampling frequency is sufficiently high with respect to the maximum frequency component present in the input. Now what happens if we sample the signal at a frequency that is lower than the Nyquist rate? To answer this we continue with the same signals x1 and x2 but reduce the sampling rate to 1000 Hz. Thus these are the resulting discrete signals. What do we observe? We observe that the discrete signals appear identical. Even though the dis digital frequencies are different, the signals appear similar. This happens because of undersampling. Undersampling is essentially sampling too slowly or sampling at a rate below the Nyquist frequency. As seen in this case, the 900 Hz signal is undersampled, due to which after sampling it looks similar to 100 Hz signal. Before we proceed further and understand more about aliasing, let us mathematically prove the similarity between the two signals. The signal x2 with digital frequency 0.9 can further be expressed as 
simplifying this using cos a plus b identity as seen the equation reduces to the equation of x1 hence the reconstructed 900 hertz signal will appear as an allies of 100 hertz signal Aliasing is defined as transformation of high frequency information into false lower frequencies. As per the Nyquist rate, the sampling frequency must be st strictly greater than twice the maximum frequency component in the input. If instead the sampling frequency is known, then the theorem gives us an upper bond that the frequencies of interest must be less than half the sampling rate. The analog frequencies in this range generate accurate digital representation. This justification is also true for the same range of negative frequencies. But what happens if the frequencies chosen are greater than half the sampling frequency? Half the sampling frequency. If the sampling condition is not satisfied, these frequencies will overlap and will appear as false mirror images of the original frequency around the Nyquist frequency. This situation is called as aliasing back or folding back. Putting it all together, thus aliasing creates false images of the sequence signal at frequencies below the Nyquist frequency. Signals are uniquely identified only if the frequencies lie below half the sampling rate. And finally, the Nyquist fre frequency is the demarcation between frequencies that are correctly sampled and those that will cause aliases.